time here, I'm gonna go after Dale. Dale. Right over there. That's the only open wheeled car here at Chuck Paul. You guys, all jokes aside, we're excited because we're gonna bring to you Dave's very first time driving his race car finally. We have Mike Essa, a main man who's gonna coach me today. So I'm pumped for that. There's Dale. I'll see you soon, Dale. See you soon, Dale. You better run. Brought the Evo 2, another fun track day. I'm gonna be chasing these two guys down because your car's now straight piped and tuned. Well, let's get the cars unloaded, let's suit up, and let's do some racing. <laughs> I love this car. I actually can't believe I haven't driven it in five months. Oh, it's McCarran time. With that new Valtronic exhaust. We're gonna shoot some flames today. That'll be the only thing in flames today, I hope. Oh, Peter. I was doing so good. you up? I was doing so good. Actually, that's not too bad. There it is, you guys. Is that it? Now, will the car start? That is the question of the day. And here is the fate of the Furious. Right there. Electronics warming up. We have no ECU yet. I just hit it a bunch of times. Yeah. It's not even trying yet. The trick is you have to push the brake so hard. McCarran. McCarran always runs eventually. Are you nervous? I'm not as nervous as I have been because I have Mike. If I didn't have Mike, yeah. Oh wait, Mike looks good at that beanie, you guys. Comment below. The beanie look for Mike? I like it. Off to the racetrack gas station we go. This thing needs a lot of fuel. It is very empty. <laughs> you have no fuel, buddy. Is that the gas station? I sure hope so. I would hope so. Yep. Card only. This is the money right here. This one. Oh, you gotta push, use a manual handle. Push manual handle. You got a bicycle looking grip right there on the This thing? Yeah. Pull it? Squeeze it. Oh, that's weird. Because of the chocks turn off. That's weird. Race car stuff, hey? Wow. Everything's just a little bit to know that before you got in this car. <laughs> How graceful does it look when you're middle aged getting out of a race car that's one inch off the ground? Hey, it, daddy. <laughs> just struggles. I had to hold this because the line has a huge cable on it with a weight. If we were in F1, we definitely would have lost the race by now. How much does it cost for a race car? 180 bucks. Just under 16 gallons. You have to turn it on, see how full it is. Hey, 94%. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, look what Dale also drives. Dale's also got a CGT. Dale's got a taste. Dude. What's up, Dale? Hey, Dale. Dale doesn't know who his arch nemesis is. <laughs> keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer, Dale. Okay, here's the plan. For the first run, again, Damon's never been here before, Ryan's never tracked his car, I've never driven my car or the track. So, to be smart, Mike's gonna drive my car, I'll be passenger to watch Mike and find the line with the road. He'll set the line for Damon and Ryan, and after a few laps, I'll switch and I'll drive the McLaren for the very first time. Am I nervous? Yeah. All right, I finally figured out my harness with the Hans device. First time using one. I think the most intimidating part about doing the race car experience versus the street car is just all the safety gear and feeling so constricted. Not only the suit, the shoes, the gloves, the balaclava and the helmet, and then obviously you're still strapped in. So you're already a little bit out of your comfort zone. Yeah, very different feeling. Totally. Yeah. We didn't even check the tire pressure in this thing. <laughs> How are we doing, Mike? We're good. There's a car coming up. I'm going to let him pass us. Oh, me too. We try to make this one continuous circle, right, with, uh, with the steering input the same. Back there, but we're not gonna worry about him. 
Copy that. Yeah, no, I'm fine. I'm just getting to know the track. Yellow flag, yellow flag. Copy that, yellow flag. How's the McLaren feeling now that it's retuned? I've only been half throttled so far. It feels like it's got so much more power than before. So much faster. Yeah, before I was like pinned everywhere and uh, you were just catching me and now I'm just half throttled cruising. Damn, now we got a real race. Hell yeah. The bad part is I did not check the tire pressure in this thing, so I have no idea where they're at. Oh, don't worry, I took care of that for you. Ah, uh, thank you. I was gonna say, it feels pretty decent. This thing feels a little sluggish in, like, mid-range mid RPM, so I'll have to look at the tune and see. It's, I don't know if it's just super rich in a spot. Well, we did ask for a flame tune, so yeah, it might be a bit rich. Ah, uh, yeah. Drivability is not, not the best. Okay, pass okay on the inside. That was a flame. Woo! Yeah, big flames, man. Big flames. McLaren are insane. It sounds wild in the car. There's no reference points. You need to know this track. Slowly build it up, build it up, build it up. Yeah, I, I couldn't see anything. I was just following Mike. Without Mike, I'd be blind on that track. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Bro, how was it? First time on the track. Uh, intense. It intense, was, right? Yeah, it was a lot going on. Dude, so much going on. Especially the cars <laughs> around you, that's the hardest part. Yeah, it was. It gets it in your head, and you forget everything about the track, and braking, and you just want to hit them. I don't know about that, but it okay, was, it was stressful. Mean. I'm not a pro yet, but hopefully You're getting soon. close. Yeah, my name's going to be on the board. Is there a board here? Yeah, Dale. <laughs> Dale. There's Dale right over there. That's <laughs> son of a All right, guys, I have to stop today's video just for one minute to thank our sponsor, BetterHelp. A lot of you, including myself, are struggling with things in our life. We don't always know the answer. And most times, especially in my case, we're afraid to ask for help. For generations, especially men, we're told to not feel emotion. And if you do feel it, bottle it up and don't deal with it. And that's tough. And there's always problems we create inside ourselves. And some people go towards drinking and other things to help to deal with those problems. There's a much better solution and that's to get help with better help. You might have people in your life that you'd like to talk to, but you don't feel safe or comfortable, or you don't wanna be judged. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who's trained to listen and give you helpful, unbiased advice. Step so number one is go to the website, that's betterhelp.com slash DDE, there's a link in the description. You can answer a few questions, and BetterHelp will help connect you with a licensed professional. With years of experience, helping people with struggles just like yours. That's right, you're not alone. What's really cool is you can do a video chat, you can do a phone call, or you can message them using the app, which is really cool, especially if you're in a place where maybe you can't talk on the phone. Maybe there's people around, maybe you have shared walls in your office space, and someone could be listening. 
there's a messaging option. Once you complete a questionnaire, it will usually be matched with the therapist within 48 hours. My whole life, I hated my teeth. I had really bad teeth, I had lots of problems, so we'll get into that. And it created so many insecurities and social awkwardness, and I would talk like this, and wouldn't smile in photos, and what was the teeth is also like how I felt about myself. So through these sessions of BetterHelp, one of the things was, they're like, well, do you have any options? Like, what, what could you fix your teeth? And I was like, well, I guess so. Well, then why haven't you? I said, well, I worry about people judging me because I had really bad teeth, also have really good teeth, everyone talks about it. And the advice was really good. It's like, who cares? And I was like, yeah, who cares? So guess what? I got my teeth fixed and I feel amazing. It's those little wins like that that really can alter the course of your life. And it sounds so crazy. And it's probably a problem you're dealing with right now that might be small on the outside to others, but inside it causes so many problems. And that's why it's really important to have somebody you can talk to. You need somebody who's all about you, and that's BetterHelp. You're getting 10% off your first month of therapy. So link in the description is betterhelp.com slash DDE. Use that promo code and you'll get 10% off your first month. I appreciate you guys watching the vlog. I appreciate BetterHelp for supporting not only our channel, but also you guys. So let's get back to the action. Okay, Mike, here's the thing. We went for that session where I was a passenger, you the driver. I couldn't hear a word you were saying, so I don't know what's going on. Also, okay. there's no good, markers good. on this track, so Very I also don't know what is going sketchy. on. I'm nervous now. It's actually like no joke. The corners in the track is actually, can, you can get in trouble, especially in these cars, because you can go real fast into a corner and then realize like the corner's a lot tighter. Yeah. There were even a couple of spots like on the first two laps when my tires weren't warmed up. It was really understeering. Also, it was like cutting out on me in the beginning because I don't think it was like warm enough or something. So I don't know. Anyhow, I turned the traction control down. I turned it down to four. Okay, yeah. And then that went away. I'm not sure if it was cutting out. Probably a little adjustments. Yeah. So anyhow, it was cutting out, so I just turned traction down, and then all of a sudden, Ryan and I got real sideways. Yeah. You nervous? <laughs> you know. I'm, uh, Mark, about, I'm about, I'm about to jump here. In the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. So on the next one, are you gonna let him drive? Do you want to drive on the next one? Yep. We have yeah. an idea. Do you want him to drive on the next one? <laughs> I don't, but I mean, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. So we have an idea. We like the lead follow situation, right? Just just to get things going, because it's a bit fun and it's a, a little more mindless. You don't have to really think yet. Yeah. So we're thinking, what if you drove Dave's Squadra? Dave drives this. Oh. I follow in my car, <laughs> and Ryan does whatever Ryan does. <laughs> That's wrong, Ryan. You're That's wrong. wrong, Ryan. Wrong, Ryan. That's the plan. All right. Listen. You guys are, hey, you guys are you, gonna- you got uh, this. Yes. You, you got, why is this getting so weird, David? <laughs> all right, so Mike that thinks he can handle a Squadra Corsa, which is basically a race car. That's all bullshit. This is a street car. Like, they put a few little design elements on it, but it is nowhere near a race car whatsoever. And it doesn't have the best tires on it. I'm gonna get close now. I'm trusting you. I'm gonna get close to the back. Should you do that? It'll be smooth, because I'm gonna be right on your ass. Action shot. Listen. Did you just- <laughs> <laughs> This will be a very tame lead follow. And I'm still a little bit not, not nervous. You just want to get at it, you know? You want to dive into it like a relationship when you get married really quick. All right, here we go. We got Mike Essa in the Squadra Corsa, Dave in the 570 GT4, and we're in the Lamborghini Super Trofeo Evo G. Or what? Well, it just got tons of understeer in that car. The narrow front tires. Let's see. Dave's first time driving. Bro. What? That was not what I was expecting. What were you? Expecting? I had a plan. I've been on the sim for a while now, right? Figuring out left foot braking. I get on there and I'm like, what? No, this is <laughs> not what I thought it would feel like. Forget the track for a second. Just driving this car is so different than a street car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I was obviously struggling. The last lap, I started to get a little bit of a feel for the car, and then I was a checkered flag. But I felt like a 
effing mess up there. Dude, it's not. It's like learning to drive all Holy over. Holy crap! Yeah, dude. I was like, oh yeah, on the sim, like probably five hours. And I left foot breaking and all that. Felt really natural. I get in the car. I'm like, like oh. <laughs> right now, it's like get comfortable in the car. So just, just try how not it breaks, to how it turns. It's so different. Yeah, it's a hard pedal. Yeah, I was not and, expecting uh, that. Yeah, yeah. It's not touchy. You really have to press. Yeah, to I was not expecting that. Yeah. Oh really? No. Oh dude, the the Evo two is. Oh, that's even, way yeah, way, way harder. harder. I thought yeah. I, I thought the brakes would be like really aggressive, like on and off. And I was like, no, no, no. But once you put a lot of pressure, the, the last the first two laps, I was like. Oh, just trying to get my everything. Damon's up my ass, right? My phone rang, I answered yeah, it. Yeah, it might be a, a little bit. I put him on hold for a second, I'm like, I'm busy right now. But um, You answered a call while you were in there? <laughs> the last two laps, so I so we got a better feel for traction. Yeah. And then braking, I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah, you but, can make up a lot of time under braking, right? Oh, it's like, it's you're insane. braking, and you're like, whoa. But the biggest thing is like, your brain's is watching and wants to react way differently than the car's capable of. Do you want to slow down? You gotta retrain your brain. You're in a race car, you've got really sticky tires, you've got really good brakes. Now you have to keep, you know, just working your yeah. way forward into those braking it, zones. It, it is hard because I, I'm not watching you, I don't know what's going on, on that track. The hardest part of learning too is other cars being around because I might pay attention all of a sudden I can see someone trying to get by me. I'm like, that's, oh yeah. That's why I was yeah. trying to like give you give a point by, even though I saw a car that was five cars oh, back, right? No, to let oh, you guys I know. For them, I was like, okay, but okay. to let you guys know also there's a car behind you. That's why I started pointing when you did that. Yeah. Different, right? That's so different. Ryan, yeah. cool. you can't text while being on the track. You were texting? Yes. Look. <laughs> right. Hey, what? Oh, yeah, I did. Hold on. Yeah. yeah, you did. Look what he wrote. <laughs> oh my god. He wrote, how do I get off the track? Huh. So say that one more time, Ryan, about the checkered flag. I didn't know what the checkered flag was. How? Have you watched a race before? Yeah. All right. I just didn't pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> when I'm going by and I see them, they're like staring in my soul. They, oh, they are. They, they are, right? Sure, they're like this. Right here, I'm watching it. <laughs> How does Ryan get a black flag? Okay, so black flag is when you're doing something wrong. If you're if you're like swerving around and you're not letting people by and uh, you're like basically driving dangerously, they'll give you a black flag, and you have to come in and talk to the uh, the start line like steward. Black flag with a orange dot in it um, means a mechanical issue, like your car is leaking oil or smoking or something. So get off of the racing line. A blue flag. With a yellow stripe on it. Jesus, are you writing this down, Ryan? Dude, their guy has that many flags. Yes, they, got, they, they do. Got a whole arsenal of flags. They got this massive stack of flags. Happy grabs the wrong one and he's. he's they like, usually, they're off they top usually of it. don't. When you see that yellow flag, mm -hmm. if he's just had like you know kind of like out there dangling it, it's like it's, something's wrong, but not a big deal. If they're waving it at you, it's yeah. like check it, check up because something's going on. Red flags usually only if there's a real incident. Mm -hmm. If somebody's crashed, if somebody just spun and they're in the dirt or they're halfway on the like track. Like an F1. F1 is. is Good. Yep. Red's a, a restart. We should have gone over yeah. this uh, probably before I went over We probably track. should. You, you missed the morning meeting. Yeah. yeah. But hey, it worked out. We I made it through. You made it. The day's not over yet. I know. So this is where we had the driver's meeting. We went over it. I didn't film it because it's kind of boring, but let me explain Dale for a second. There's three groups today. There is the fastest, which is open passing, fastest point by for passing, then Dale and the open wheel race car has his own class. Dale owns the track. And you know what? I'm gonna get in his face and challenge him to a race off. Me versus Dale. I'm not gonna do that actually. But anyways, that's Dale, in case you're wondering. Here comes Dale. What's your problem with Dale? I got a big problem with Dale. He thinks he's a better driver than I am. <laughs> so I've done one quick session, now we're going back again. We have half an hour session now. Let our lead follow. Again, I feel so lost right now. I don't know how to drive all over here. I feel way more shitty than I thought I would. Not that I'm cocky, but like... I don't want to go with them. They can stay home. They can go golfing. They're Porsche owners.
lot better. A lot better. Definitely having slicks is a game changer. It's so crazy how much grip they actually have. Oh my god, like I can tell where I was making a mistake in my braking and balancing the car. I could feel like I was like, oh, I up. The tires save every time. It's funny because all those other cars feel so slow out there. Yeah. Like they're standing still. Yeah. Slow and you're, you're just going around. Oh yeah, like, no big deal. Doing? And they're like at the limit. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy, you guys. If you have experienced this in your life, I encourage you to do it. Having Mike to follow, and like he's in the Squadro, which is a street car, and I'm working to keep up with Mike. So imagine Mike in a race car. It'd be, it'd be, it'd be fun. I'd have no chance yeah. of catching him. <laughs> I had an oh moment going into the first corner. Like I touched the curb a little bit and it went into ice mode in the brakes. So oh. instead of be having more pedal and being able to stop more, it was stuck there. And I was like, oh man, I'm going off. I'm going to take front splitter off of his car here. Oh my God, it'd be funny. <laughs> it'd be a thumbnail. But, uh, I saved it. I saved it. And Damon's still out there. I hear him. Being a bully in the Super Trofeo. He just passed everybody. <laughs> Track marshal pulled him off the track and she's yelling at him right now. He was making a lot of passes. I don't know if he's waiting for point buys. I think Damon's getting kicked off the track right now. He might be. It's fun, that sounds bad. It's fun being the fast guy that can pass everybody easily because it's like, it's not even hard. Yeah. Like there's no skill whatsoever to pass somebody on this track that's in a streetcar. Yeah. This thing, by the way, um, has had some issues. It's got some power cut off. It is shooting flames though. It's shooting flames. Do you see in them at all? Oh, you're in front of me, never mind. Yeah. I saw the picture. Right, you see flames? Oh, oh yeah. I'm not seeing the flames. That was too far back. Slow. You guys, <laughs> that's what happened to Damon. The world's cockiest Lamborghini owner gets kicked off the track. Everybody was pointing me. In fact, I, I actually slowed down a couple of times, and even when they pointed me by, I was go. waiting till I was out of a corner. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. That's yeah. cool. I just wanted to talk with you and see where we were at. So. No worries. I was like, car, man. I was like, black flag. Oh, no. I was like, oh, my God. No, it's all good. No, your car's really nice, too. Thank you. I like the color. The color. I, think, yeah, I designed this color. You're just bad. Thanks. Yep. Cool. Well, I just want to check on you and see where we were. Everything's going good, though? Yeah, we're good. Awesome. Oh. Naughty, 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 naughty. What happened, Damon? So apparently I should be driving with the Porsche guys. <laughs> really? <laughs> You're literally passing everybody yeah. fast. And she's like, you didn't stuff anybody, did you? I said, everybody's pointing me by. I know the rules. I was like, I got a black flag. <laughs> did you see that? You got a black flag? It. Yeah. Oh, I didn't see that. I didn't see black it. flag. She was walking away and she was like, you might want to consider driving with the next group up. This car was starting to feel pretty comfortable. Yeah. Once I got, once I understood the track and the corners. Yep. I tried to keep up, but the tires were overheating. Oh the yeah. The brakes were overheating. I almost went off in turn one. Did you really? I touched the inside curb and it went to ice pedal where it's rock hard and it doesn't stop. And I was like, oh, I'm going to go off. You're like, Dave Squadron. <laughs> Dave Squadron. I don't thumbnail. What did you do with my Lamborghini, man? <laughs> <laughs> Now, there's the truth. Mike almost crashes my 1 of 50. <laughs> yeah. I saw it. It was pretty. But I was like, oh, Mike will recover. He's a drifter. Oh, sh. I'll see you soon, Dale. He stared you down on that. Yeah, I saw him. It's a problem, Dale. I'm like, yes, sir. What's up? I can see where you went off a little bit there on that curb. <laughs> that's. <laughs> you split the splitter. Just, you know, that's residual damage. I love that's, it. Uh, I love it. Mike Essa kind of crashes one of. Ho! Oh, oh. Ho! What's all this, Mike Essa? I didn't do the walk around on the driving. You can't prove that I did anything wrong. <laughs> I, <can't. laughs> I got the internet. And the camera. My cast destroys my 150 Squadra Corsa. Now I get free coaching for life. I got some duct tape, we'll patch it up. Dude, I love it. It's, it's like real now. It's not some show car. It's been pushed hard on the track. How's this angle, by the way, here, Mark? It's an upper angle. Everything. Well, you guys, my cast destroyed my 150 Squadra Corsa. Now it's life belongs to me. 
like it didn't already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dave and Damon are heading out right now, and they're about to get a little bit of coaching from Mike. He's gonna sit this one out and kind of let Dave know okay. what's up. He's going not, for the record. I don't want to jump in the car with Dave yet. I wouldn't either. I don't, uh, yeah, let him go out there. If he goes off by himself, I'll feel better about it than if I'm in the car. Yeah. I won't feel that great about it. So I'll tell him what he's doing wrong from the radio, from a safe distance there from, you go. <laughs> from the racetrack. There you go, right behind, you know, the bricks and... Uh, yeah, yeah, a couple walls distance. and... Stop being bullies out there, please. Ooh, James in trouble. Oh, no, might be, uh, might have been his last session right there. They're not gonna believe why I got a black flag. So? So, yes. Bull 
all the things to get kicked off the track for is not what you're expecting. Flames. Did you know your car's shooting a huge flame? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? She goes, it's shooting a huge flame and it lingers. I'm like, oh, it's a flame tune. She's like, a flame tune? <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's a flame tune. She's like, what's a flame tune? It shoots a flame out when you're shifting. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we tune it to do that. She's like, oh. I'm really sorry. I thought something was wrong with your car. I thought your car was on fire. Yeah, it's not, it's not really a normal thing to see on a racetrack unless it's like an 80s car. Right. Like something. Does it look cool? It, it looks, looks crazy. crazy. I can hear it. You got us in trouble. Dale. Dale narked on me. Dale? Dale was like, that car's shooting flames. Oh, Dale's probably mad because I took his wife out. You leave her on the track? She was in here. Uh oh. No, I took Dale's wife for a ride. I mean, not like that. Listen, in the car. I gotta talk to Dale. She's like, Dale told me that you were shooting flames and I had to pull you in. Really? Yeah, because the car's shooting flames. I got pulled off the track. Yeah! Dale f on me. Yep, I'm gonna drive my race car. I don't care if it's broken, Mike ass on. Yeah, I gotta check engine light. All right, Dale, time to pay the piper. Look at them in a smug outfit. In a smug race car. Oh, if it isn't Dale, the legend around here. I heard you narked on me about my flame tune. Huh? <laughs> I'm just messing with them. I'm just messing with them. Uh, this thing is absolutely crazy. It's like a mini F1 car. What is this thing, Dale? What Formula is this? Mazda. A what? Formula Mazda. Formula Mazda. Mazda rotary engine. Oil. Dude, this thing is crazy. It's fun. Bro. You got some big balls sitting in there to drive this thing. I love it, Dale. You're a badass. I respect you. How do you fit in this thing? You're the same height as me. Slide down in there. And okay, can I sit in there? Yeah. Can I? Definitely. What you do is you put your leg in. Yeah. You step up into this. Okay. Rather than step on the body. Fair. Oh, I get the steering wheel too? Can't drive without the wheel. You want me to drive it? Yeah. Yeah, you got the clutch in? Yeah. This thing is so cool. I need one. I know. Dale made me his day. $17,000. We're buying one for everybody in the shop. Everybody's getting one. Right? Get one too, Ryan. When you're off probation. You know what you did. 